Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. Nobody's coming. Anxiety lives in the future. Be strong enough not to fight. Sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage and your whole life will change. IFT training, as I teach, limits your fears are often just an illusion. That's my positive self-talk that I do when I have anxiety, which I do right now. You are experiencing, experiencing a level eight anxiety. Level nine is the highest, level eight is it's pretty much up there. Heart's going about 180 miles um, beats per minute, sweaty palms, senses ready to go, fight or flight glands ready to go. And during the course of my 10, 15 minute talk, I'm gonna give you the levels as I go. Uh, I am scared. This is my first time talking in public, uh, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to use the tools I use in my own healing thought process that work, that work for kids, work for adults, and work for people that don't suffer as much as or the, at the extent that I did. Um, as you saw in the video, you saw tunnels, you saw planes, you saw all these different things. And I'm, I'm going to be going all around the place, and I know I might get yelled at later on for doing that, but that's just the way I do it. Um, that was at the height of my agoraphobia. Unfortunately, that's when I started my company. I started selling actually for my dad, but then I started my own company, and I actually was petrified to leave my home. Those feelings that I had, the anxiety, the, the crippling anxiety, um, was at 1 o'clock in the morning, at 2 o'clock in the morning, essentially afraid to get in my car, forgetting about the sales call that I had to go to. I had to go travel to New York, travel to Maryland, travel to wherever, and compete with 1,200 other, uh, other competitors. I actually had to get there. And to me, that was the first step. So not only was I fighting my competition, I was fighting myself. So I'm proud of the fact that God gave me the courage and the will and the strength to be able to do that, to fight it for 15, 20 years and build up a very successful company. And I promise to use the word humbly once, to make the money and to be secure all the while going through that. So I'm very, very proud of that fact. Anxiety starts at a very young age. Um, many of you people from, um, from Bradley and maybe, maybe some of you have experienced that or know people that have. It starts at a young age. And for me, it started eight, nine, 10 years old. I remember um, as a young boy, um, always worried about my parents, always worried about trying to be a people pleaser. Um, there were certain situations when we went out to dinner, my dad was working two jobs, you know, he was a blue collar guy, and I, always, I would always order the cheapest thing on the menu. I'm at a level seven right now. Um, he would always order the cheapest thing on the menu. I would always order the cheapest thing on the menu. Why? It would break their hearts if they knew I did it now. But, it's because I felt bad he was working two jobs. Some people are wired that way. That was my, emotionally, I was tied into what was going on with my parents, my surroundings, even my little friends. Physically, things would happen. If they went out to dinner, whatever they did, my throat would close. So I thought. I used to wake up at 10 years old, and put the light on because I thought I was going blind. And for some of you, it might be laughable, but I remember this like it was yesterday. And the only way I could think of, of, of illustrating it is I developed what's called an anxiety tree. And if you, if you read my book, you might have saw a little bit, a glimpse of it up there. It's, it's essentially the roots are starting to grow and the, the branches are starting and it's the what ifs, the yeah buts, and the doubt and the fear and so on and so forth. And it starts at a very young age, which is very critical to know. As my, into my teenage years, nothing changed. I had a lot more fun. I had, the, I had the nice cars. I dated. I went out. I did everything a teenage guy does, except I had this thing along with me, which was my anxiety tree. And the only thing that happened was more experiences caused more and more doubt and more fear and more I'm not worthy. And, more, and where did it come from? I don't know. It just 
manifest it. And every time I would try to fight it, I was actually watering it, and it would just get, it would get stronger, and the tentacles would grow. Into my 20s, uh, again, having a great time. Then we got married, and I started my company, and it was in full bloom. And the unfortunate part is, and again, if you read it, is I'm a very good salesperson, and I hid it from the people I love the most. Um, and one of the people, obviously, is my wife. And she never knew the severity of it. And I used to, she used to be a flight attendant. I won't say stewardess. A flight attendant. <laughs> and uh, she used to leave for three or four. I'm at a level four right now. She used to leave for three or four days at a time. And she didn't know that I would take a, the keys, put it on my pinky. I'd be in my little tidy whities I'd be on the floor. And I'd have my pants next to the door. Because if I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning, I'd have to go to the hospital. I made more hospital visits than. And I would lie when I got there. Because no guy wants to show vulnerability, wants to show weakness. And they gave me beta blockers. They thought it was a heart. How did I know I was causing it myself? I didn't know what it was. I used to call it the thing because I never gave, I didn't have a name for it. And it just got worse and it got worse and it got worse. Since this is a book launch, I want to talk about the book because this is, um, this is very important and it's very near and dear to me because it's 173 pages of my life. And in the book, um, I used to say it's a one part, two part. Now I'm up to four part book. Um, it's, a very, it's, it's, it's important because you have to trust. If you read the book and you read the little tidbits of when I was a young boy to the absolute present time now, to my blessed time now, you'll, you'll read the stories and more importantly, Steve did a great job taking my gobbledygook as we call it and putting it into complete sentences and he really caught exactly how I felt because you need to understand that's how you feel. You should not feel that way on a, you know, when you're in a line at a bank, you, when you're getting a haircut. You know, things that are ordinary, you should just live your life as normal. And when you're, you have this heightened anxiety, you don't know what it is and it spirals out of control and you have this panic attack, you don't want to, if you have a panic attack over there, you're afraid to go over there. You're afraid to go over there. You're afraid. So what happens is it spirals out of control and I remember the first time it happened to me, I was walking through a mall with my friend, and I had to get out. And I was, I was about 17, 18 years old. I had to leave, and I had no idea why. I made an excuse. He was my best friend. I had to leave. So that's when it all started. But this book chronicles that, and it tells stories of when I was a young boy into my teenage and adult years into working in my, within my company and feeling the actual feelings that I felt and still do to this day. I'm at a level three right now, which is a nice feeling. Um, but years ago, and I, know, I don't mean to bounce around. Years ago, I would be at that eight, and I would stay at that eight because I didn't know if there was a nine. I didn't know if there was a 10. I thought 10 was death. I never thought about suicide. But I always thought that, am I trying to kill myself? Is there something wrong with me? I don't know. I never knew what it was. Um, the second part about this book is education, which is very, very important because if you don't suffer, and you, whether you're yawning now or you, whether you're saying, I don't really know what that is, you might know somebody that is. And more importantly, you might know one of your kids might be. One of your kids might say, Mommy or Daddy, I have this thing, and it's, ah, deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. Deal with it is like somebody saying to me, relax on a plane, OK? Deal with it's not the answer. You need to deal with it. We need to deal with it. As a society, we need to deal with this because this anxiety tree is real, OK? Trust me, I've been through it. I know what it's like. It's very real. And this book will educate you on not only the feelings, but how to deal with it which goes to the next part, which is the healing thought process. The healing thought process is simplified because I'm a simple guy. And it works. It worked today. I went in the green room. I call it the green room. 
and I did my exercises. Some of them are simple, some of them are a little more you know, difficult, but it takes a long time for you to trust yourself. And one of the words you might have heard me say was, nobody's coming. Nobody com nobody's coming is the most important phrase to me. Because in order to fix yourself, you have to trust yourself. You have to know that it's only anxiety, which I finally learned. It took me years to learn that. And it's not going to kill you. But the problem was the roots and the tentacles were so strong that it took me a long time to start trimming them. So, but that, that part of the healing thought process is very, very, very important. Nobody's coming. You need to fix it yourself. Even if you're at a young age, you need support, positive self-talk, but you need to be able to fix it yourself and rely on yourself step by step by step. Chapter called The Longer the Longer. The longer you've had it, the longer it's going to take to trim the tree. The other part is the inspirational part. Um, I've got to use the word humbly again. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm a very private person. In fact, there's people in here that I see that I've worked out with, I've drank with, I coached with. I've, uh, our kids are friends together. And they're probably saying I never even knew he had it. Because I've, it's almost like I came out of the closet. Because people have texted me it, from all over the place. Brian, I never knew. Brian, I never knew. Brian, I never My wife never knew. Why would I want to show weakness? Tough guy. I'm not going to sit up there and say, I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid. I don't know what I was afraid of. But then when I found out, it was gradual, but it was fixed. And it's an inspirational story. And I'm begging you to look at it this way, from a humble guy, not from an egomaniac, to take your lives to take people that you know and put, use it as a template and put your life over it, even if you don't suffer to that extent, even if you're not concerned about the, the, the anxieties and the, and the crippling anxiety and the so on and so forth, if, if you don't have it, but you know somebody that suffers just a little bit or has a little bit of fear, I want you to look at this and say, he built that company going through that mess in his head. And I'm afraid to get, go for that interview. I'm afraid to go out for varsity. I'm afraid to move my family across country because that's the job for us. That's what I want that this book is also. I want it to be inspirational for people that have that little bit of self-doubt in them. So that's very, very important to me. I um, recently read, as it's been the cat's out of the bag, that um, May is Mental Health Month. And I read the Providence Journal. And I, uh, I saw Bradley Hospital is at the cutting edge of, of, of everything. I immediately called my team. Nancy got, got he, they got us a meeting with Bradley Hospital. I met with four or five doctors, wonderful, wonderful people. And um, I think there was more of an interview, but we went back and forth. And at the end, it was, I felt so comfortable with them, and more importantly, I found out that they not only wanted to get involved with me, they wanted to partner with me. And that gave me so much, I was filled with pride, and it gave me even more credibility that I know what I'm talking about, even though I fixed myself. And now, even though this is a guy that doesn't like talking about himself, and I know you wouldn't believe that, but it's true, I'm doing this because I'm announcing that where we sit right now in the next couple of months, I am going to make the number one center for the Brian Benedus Center for Anxiety, Panic, and Hope. And that's going to be here. I'm also going to um, implore you to get me into your schools, get me into your churches, get me into the Boy Scouts, the Little Leagues, what have you. All the places I was petrified to talk. And I know we only have a short amount of time, so I want to keep the stories very, very short. But all these places are places of anxiety for me. Anytime you're standing up and the focal point is on you, there's no way out. So that's where the anxiety is. I'm at a level two, by the way, right now. Next one, I fall asleep. 